One of the requests that we've been given the last couple of years doing these videos is more tips and techniques. So what we've done is we've taken some of the top guides in the industry and had them share how they actually do their figure eights. Take a look, hopefully you learn something, and enjoy. One of the things this year that's been really critical in my boat, we've had roughly 70% of the boated fish in my boat have come on a figure eight boat side maneuver. One of the key things is to do a proper figure eight, of course. One of the most important things in musky fishing, and that is a proper figure eight technique. Um, mastering this will definitely, definitely up your catches year in, year out, day in, day out. When you're musky fishing, there's a couple things you need to uh, remember when you're out here casting, and one is the figure eight. Super important deal. I'm dropping the rod tip as the bait approaches, and I'm doing that for two reasons. One is I'm changing levels on the, on the retrieve, and that can be a trigger in itself, triggering a fish that's simply following. And the other thing is it does is it gets the attention of the fish on the bait that's dropping down as opposed to me who's standing up in a 20-foot boat about to move over top of that fish. So by dropping that bait as I come in, I'm getting that fish's attention moving down. If you're working it slow, bring the bait in. I always dip the rod, probably two to three feet in the water, swing it around, swing it slow on the high end, fast on the straights, slow on the high end, fast on the straights. The whole key to the figure eight to me is the first turn because it's the first time with a bucktail that that bait does anything different to these fish. So when you're bringing it up, you bring it up to the leader, come in, that first turn needs to be the widest turn. You want to really reach out on it. 90% of the fish will always hit on the turns. What I usually do is I will do an oval on the first turn and then I'll transition into an eight. Just do a big oval. You know, if you got a 50 to 55 inch fish coming in, just a big oval works and go down deep through the middle still and then come up high on the outside turns and then back down deep and then up high on the outside turns. For the beginner who hasn't really done a lot of musky fishing, I like to coach the oval and the reason I like the oval is because it's easier, they don't have to think as much, trying to make that aid every time. And one of the things that the oval does is it allows you to get bigger sweeps away from the boat. You know, if you're doing a figure eight, you gotta really concentrate on getting that really wide and sweeping. Get it way away from the boat, but with an oval, you're, giving a, you're providing a bigger sweep right away with less effort. And that oval will work just the same. There's a change as far as turning, but there's also a change in elevation, and that really triggers the fish, that change in elevation. But if you're just starting out and just trying to learn how to do this, the oval can be the answer. Everybody's kind of got their own style. Mine basically is not so much a figure eight as it is just giant circles and changing depth direction. When I come into the boat, I'll go deep and just make a huge oval. If there's one on it, I'll go back down deep again, come up high on that outside turn. If it doesn't eat after the second one, then I'll actually change direction and go back the other way. A lot of times that little change in direction, if you got one squirrely on it, they'll eat it. But the biggest thing is speed and changing directions in your eight and height. But a really important thing on the eight, especially on that first turn, is this. This is something a lot of guys, I know guiding, I see them do, is you always want to make that first turn away from the boat. And what I mean is this, you want to bring the bait all the way to you. I'm bringing it up, there's a fish, speed it up, and I'm turning away from the boat. The reason you want to turn away from the boat, you've got the whole lake to work with. One of the problems I see is guys bringing the bait up, and they speed it up. They start their eight out here like this and turn towards the boat. You're cramping yourself. You're constantly here. You, you're losing room. If it's a big fish, use the lake. You got the whole lake to work with. As you're bringing it in, coming up, there's a fish. Speed it up, go down, and turn away from the boat. First turn's always away from the boat. Second turn towards the boat and then away from the boat. Use the lake to your advantage, okay? You've got longer rods now. Use the lake to your advantage. Keep making those wide turns. There's three ways to set the hook. One of them is that fish eats on the outside corner going straight away, and I am just gonna bury that rod and drive the hooks home and keep tension on that fish after that time, okay? If a fish happens to eat coming inside, I'll go back on the fish 
and that fish will be driving the hooks into the corner of its mouth. So it depends a little bit where in the figure eight that the fish eats. So you have to react to that. When that fish, let's say it grabs right there, boom, back the other way, jerk it towards the tail. You always want to set the hook towards the tail of the fish. And what that does is it, it lets the hooks bury back in the back corner of the mouth. If you set the same way the fish is facing, you know, let's say I'm going this way and I, I pull the same way that fish is facing, you'll either pull the bait out of the fish's mouth or you'll barely get the fish hooked in the, at the tip of the nose. More than likely, that fish is gonna eat right on the outside turn, right out there. That fish eats, I'm gonna go back into its head, okay? The reason that's so important is your hooks are all laying this direction. Generally in a figure eight, they're gonna come up and eat the back side of the bait versus coming in off the side. Time to time, they'll come in from the side. But generally, a figure eight fish is gonna come in, it's gonna eat the back of the bait. So as it eats the back of the bait, you wanna turn that bait almost into their mouth so the hooks go back into the corner of their mouth. It's very important. The tissue's softer, the roofs of these mouth, the fish's mouths are very hard, and it's hard to get one of those little snout hooks. Generally, they come off. So it's very important as I move in, that fish eats, I'm coming back into the fish. One of the simplest ways that I can say to anybody starting off is no matter when it, where a fish eats or how it eats, just pull the rod back into you. Um, the best way to do it is if the fish is swimming away, you pull it back at them, the opposite direction of the fish swimming. But for Anybody who's not overly great at doing it and changing directions isn't always the easiest thing to do in a figure eight. Like I say, at any point, if it eats here, just pull the bait into your body. Doesn't matter if it's on an outside turn, doesn't matter at any time. If you're way down like this, just pull the bait up and hang on, because then the fun is about to begin. I come out and I'm way out here like this, and now I gotta try to hook set it back into the fish. You wanna make sure you're holding your rod right, okay? A lot of times when I come into my figure eight, I reel right-handed like this. My right hand comes to the butt of the rod. So now I'm supporting the rod with both hands. It's very important. If you want to come in and you're real lazy about it, and you're going like this one-handed, I don't have as much control. That rod is kind of flopping like that. By putting the hand on the back of the butt, I can work this rod almost like a stir stick and I can get to that rod and that bait to do what I want it to do. The second part is, is by having two hands on it, that hook set, I'm using my arms as a lever. I'm resetting, I'm stretched way out. Now I'm pushing with this one and pulling in with, into my body with the other arm. I'm actually hooking it like that. So remember, you wanna, your hook set needs to be back into the fish's body, okay? Fish comes in, eats, your hook set should come back into the fish's body back into their mouth versus pulling it away from them. And a lot of times that hook will just slip out of their mouth and they're gone. Some of the mistakes people make on the figure eight, and these are mistakes that cost people fish, because basically on the figure eight, we are trying to catch a fish that has not bit on the retrieve. So if we haven't gotten a strike on the retrieve and we have a fish that's following, or if even a fish that we haven't seen yet, we want to try and trigger that fish. Now, I'm going to show you if I let out, let's say 15 inches of line, away from my leader. So now my leader is 15 inches from the tip of my rod. That same movement I just made now makes my bait corner way less. It doesn't track. I'm not as getting as wide a sweep. So it's very important to shorten that line up right up to the leader. It gives you control of your bait. The biggest mistakes are people coming in and making too sharp a turns slashing back and forth, a large fish or even a smaller fish really has a hard time making that turn. So the key is we want to make big round turns, whether you're doing an eight or an oval, whichever you prefer, is to make big round turns. I see so many times they'll come in and they'll cut back like this, like this. We call that the Zorro figure eight, rarely effective. I'm using a nine foot rod and that makes all the difference in the world. And you can see I'm literally working this rod just like a big joystick. I've got my hand down by the reel, I've got my other hand on the butt, 
and I'm working it just like I'm running a big joystick and I'm making those big circles. I'm transitioning from shallow to deep, shallow on the corners, deep in the transitions. Easier to figure eight being one of the key points to having a longer rod. When you bring in your bait, you can get it deeper, quicker. You can get it way, make big, huge swings. When we're turning, you know, a lot of these, these fish are getting bigger and bigger every year. And you have to make, to get a big fish to turn out, you have to make big swoops. Well, in order to do that, a long rod is definitely a must. The nine foot obviously gives us the ability to paint the huge circles in the water. And that's really the visual you want to have is painting circles. But more importantly, the rod itself needs to have enough backbone to be able to drive the hooks home. But you also want a little more flex in the tip area so the fish can actually get the bait. When the fish engulfs the bait, you want a little bit of give in the tip. But you need to balance that out by not having a rod that's so soft that it gives in the corners to the extent that you lose your large corners. Now this rod has a perfect balance of flex and you can work the corners and you'll notice the rod is relatively firm going through the corners and I'm still able to make a large arc. A soft rod, especially when you get up into baits, the 13 size, the supermodel size, literally collapses on the corner and the diameter of your circle of your turn suffers as a result and you're no longer able to make those big smooth corners. And when you do get bit, your power is limited to drive those hooks home, especially on a large fish with a heart. One of the real important things too is why I like to use a stiffer rod is when you're making big swings with these supermodels, pounders, any of these bigger baits that are on the market now, you, you need to have some stiffness to it. With a lighter rod, all you're gonna do is fight it, and you're gonna get a lot more fatigued. So what I like to have is a good stiff rod with just a little bit of tip to it, so it keeps the bait working, keeps the blade spinning good, keeps the action going, but you gotta have good backbone into your rod, and then it also allows you with the longer rod to get way deep on fish. You like guys talked about earlier on fish that are spooking or going for them, I mean, the deeper you can get your figure eights a lot of times on, on slow, inactive fish, the more hookups you'll get. The figure eight after dark can be extremely critical for triggering strikes, especially this summer we've had a lot of success, slow rolling, deep structure with big blades, and these fish are coming in well back of the bait, interested but not involved yet, and we want to get them involved. So what we're doing is, is triggering these fish at the boat with a figure eight. The biggest difference at night, obviously visibility can be an issue coming in. Um, it helps to use a bright color a lot of the time so you can pick up the bait at night. Another good idea is to put one of these little glow rubber beads on your rod. It does two things. You could, it gives you visibility and also keeps you from damaging your tip top, making contact. The biggest difference for me in the execution at night is I try not to do a lot of depth transition. I come in and I keep the bait level maybe a foot to six inches under the water while I'm doing my figure eight because basically I'm trying to make it easier for the fish to get it and changing depth up and down in the corners is going to make it a little more of a challenge for that fish to home in on the bait. So at night, keep your figure eight slow, smooth, and at the same height. One question that I get quite often is, is how do you figure eight in the dark? Really, it's not that much different. The one thing that I can say is that you really need to focus a lot more on where your bait is and where it is in the water. The reason that you have to focus is because you can't visually see your bait coming in. You still want to have that rod tip an inch or so away from your leader. That's very important because of the sweep. But as you become more in tune as the night progresses, you'll know exactly where your rod or where your bait is to your rod. As the bait is coming in, of course, we're watching for a follow. And if we engage a fish coming in, we're going to speed up. But as we come close to the boat, I'm going to drop the rod tip and I'm going to drop the bait down and swing up into the outside turn. And the real keys here are the transition as you come in. If you come in and make an, a, a radical 90 degree turn, most of the times a fish, that, especially a fish that's not aggressive, is going to go right underneath the boat and that'll be your shot. You've missed it. You, you try to read the, the mood of the fish. You know, if a fish comes in and it's really aggressive and, and right at the end it's charging in, then you want to speed your bait up. Um, as you come into the, the figure eight, if that fish is hot, you know, really get that bait zipping around and going fast. Um, if the fish is slow, you know, just go nice and slow. Um, so, so you want to read the, the mood of the fish. And the other thing is the size of the fish. You know, the, the bigger the fish, the bigger your turns want to be. So uh, let's say I got a big fish coming in this time. You know, if you see a big fish coming in, your first turn 
Get that bait down and then bring it up high and really wide, really wide. The bigger the fish, the wider the turn. I like to keep the bait eight inches in front of that fish's beak. My hand here represents the fish. I want eight inches. The reason I want that eight inches is so that if the fish is catching up, I'm gonna speed up, okay? If the fish starts slowing down, I slow down. And the reason I do that is I'm keeping the bait in the fish's face to help trigger that fish. If I pull away completely from the fish and it's way back here and it loses sight of the bait, it swims off, it's gone. So it's very key in my mind to keep the bait visual to that fish so that he only doesn't see it, he feels it, and it's all right in his face. It's all about speed. You gotta play, play the reaction to the fish. I mean, if it's, if it's falling way behind and when you're speeding up, then you kind of maybe gotta back off and let it catch up again. But as soon as you get it within a couple feet, then you wanna, you wanna speed it up. It's just like a cat, you know? You wanna keep it away, but it'll catch it if it wants it. If I can stress one thing is every time you get a chance or every cast, practice a figure eight. Even if you just sit there and make two casts or two, two figure eights, just do it because when the real action happens is when it has to be done perfect. And when it's done perfect, you'll really like the end results. You're gonna learn by trial and error and you're gonna have a lot of errors. Trust me, I've, I've gone through my trials and errors. Um, but you know, if you follow just a, a few simple rules, make your, your turns wide, go down deep through the middle and up on the outside turns um, you, you're just going to put a lot more fish in the boat. Change in direction, change of height, and the change of speed. So hopefully these tips and techniques will help you put more fish in the boat this next season. Good luck everybody.